Welcome to IRL Studio Productions. The views and opinions expressed in this stream are those of the authors and speakers only and do not necessarily reflect the views of everyone involved with the IRL Studio or our general audience. The information we gather is for education and research purposes only. How does one transcend beyond space and time? Well, you do it right here on The Chris Hart Show, where thoughts are divided and mysteries are unwound. Join us every Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and hear Chris Hart's stories from the past and into the present. We'll look into the future to unlock the mysteries. So sit back, relax on IRL Studio Productions as we present The Chris Hart Show. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hi, Chris. How are you? Hi. Fine. Thank you. Well, you sound great. Um, so what we were we were going to talk about, um, I, I think, a few different things today, weren't we? Yeah. Well, I'm going to start off um, with uh, Yoni ones, and um, then we're going to move into serial killers. Um, the Menendez brothers, um, those kind of shootings. And then hopefully if Russell is around, we'll talk about the Anunnaki, but I know he's um, on the missing list right now. So I'll just carry on. Very good. Yeah, he'll be with us as soon as he gets his uh, technical difficulties squared away. We have Lady Anon with us here today too. She's gonna hang out with us. Great. Hey, so you are Hi there. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, these subjects are something that are very, very near and dear to my heart. Oh, great. Join in. <laughs> so just let me know when to go. Oh, go ahead. It's all yours. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. I thought I was expecting music and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I want to um, kick the show off discussing yoni ones and i was startled a friend of mine um mentioned it a few days ago that she had bought a yoni wand and she advised me to buy one now i'd never heard of one and i wasn't sure what a yoni was but i had heard about yoni steaming and your yoni, by the way, for anybody who doesn't realize it, is your tush, as they say in America. <laughs> and I don't know if we've got a posh name for it, actually, in England. But yoni is just wonderful. And I don't know where it's come from, but, it, you know, it, it is lovely. Um, so I'd heard about yoni steaming, but one of my friends talked about a yoni wand. And I didn't really know what she was talking about. And then... I was speaking to another friend and they said, oh, yes, I've got one and everyone's got one. And I Googled it and I went to my local crystal shop and they actually had a selection of these wands. Now, what they are, they're normal wands, but they're made in different different crystals like obsidian and the different crystals have different um different healing capabilities for them there's rose quartz obsidian amethyst they're the main ones oh and green adventuring these are the main ones for the wands and what you have to do is basically just put it inside your yoni and if you've been sexually abused or if you've been with abusive partners or if you just want to um, sort of, you know, get in touch with the universe, it is a great place to start. So somebody, some bright spark has found this out. 
So I actually went and purchased a £40, that's $80, amethyst wand from my local crystal supplier. It's a really beautiful wand. And I tried it out just for 10 minutes and it was absolutely amazing. I felt as if the crystal wand was filling up with all the memories of my abuse and images started to flash in my mind of past times, um, sexual abuse by my father and, and my brother, um, which wasn't so great, but also past partners that, um, you know, I haven't had that many, but, you know, ones that I actually felt love for and it all came up unbelievably one's whole sexual um history just was triggered to be downloaded into this yoni wand i mean it was absolutely amazing and then i took it to sterilize it and i found that it had actually changed it had um obviously downloaded all my sexual history into it i don't know if my, the listener believes that or not but that is what I believe happened. And it, it went black inside. Obviously, it wasn't the greatest, the greatest of um, memories downloaded into it. It actually turned black and it was filled with this black smoke. And just by looking at this wand, I could tell that it had downloaded um, this past abuse. And it was all very all very healing and today I felt a lot lighter within myself uh, I looked online and basically there's a lot of sites talking about this now and they advise to then bury the crystal outside and then you can use it again after um, a couple of weeks buried outside and I haven't had time to do that because I've been rushing around today um, perhaps it's not necessary but it just does feel like I've let something go and it does feel as if it's all contained in that crystal. I mean, I wonder, would it be a good idea just to bury it once and for all? I mean, I welcome anybody in the um, live stream who wants to comment on that. But I do believe in it. And, you know, there's a lot of people online talking about it. There's a lot of people online selling how to, to do it. And I think it's pretty straightforward um, how to do it. It's obvious. Um but a lot of people are saying, you know, things like, oh, it should touch the cervix. But I think that's going a little step too far. You just need to um, insert the crystal wand and ask for downloading to happen. And it's an, a really um, amazing experience. It's not sexual experience. It's just like a, a really weird um, cleansing of negativity and you know lots of people might say well I've only got positive but surely there's some negativity and I think there's a benefit for people that do have the positive but I think a lot of us aren't living in tune with our very important sexuality and we're also numbed off you know in various ways I mean I don't really know what men are supposed to do but at the moment it's just for women and it kind of brings your body alive and I would really recommend the amethyst crystal um, for doing this. It's incredibly healing and it does connect you to the um, higher universe. It's really, really cleansing um, and quite amazing. So I don't know if anybody is here with me. Uh, I believe somebody, one or two people are. Does anybody want to comment on what I've been sharing? Well, I, I I think it's uh, pretty amazing. Um, I've I've heard of yoni, but I had this is the first time I've heard of a yoni wand. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of an interesting thing there. <laughs> yeah, I mean it is interesting. A lot of people are making a lot of money out of you know. Ooh, I, I know how just how to do it, and you know, you know, pay you know fifty dollars or whatever, and all you know online. But you really don't need a tutorial. It's just like you know 
up it goes <laughs> and and then you know that's that's the recipe you just leave it there for like you know 10 minutes and you know ask it to sort of download and it just starts happening it's just almost like downloading something into a computer you know you sort of put the disc in it kind of does it itself and then um you know it's done they say to repeat it like once a month but i actually feel mine is done i mean it's quite amazing i was thinking of doing an article for the daily mail on on the whole thing but you know most of mainstream don't really believe the crystal thing so but it's a shame because you know why should it just be for people that sort of believe that crystals have got power you know so Absolutely. you're you're thinking that after you use it and it kind of gets filled with this uh black smoke or like where it turns dark that it's um that you have to get rid of it then after that? Or um, what What kind of other instructions do they give with it? Well, you can, you know, bury it in the garden under soil and then obviously remember where it is and then go back for it after a couple of weeks. Then the energy, because you know, you, the energy from you that you're storing, that's making you numbed out, um, that's making you not uh, as sensitive to, you know, to everything really, you know, I think a lot of us get, you know, our sexuality gets numbed out, you know, we get rejected by people, you know, when we're younger, maybe a first relationship, that's numbing out number one, um, you know, and we get maybe our sexuality rejected. And so everybody has a bit of pain. And then when there's build up like corrosion, it sort of stops you having that fresh new experience. Um, and so basically, yeah, you download into it, it stores it, and then you it drains in into the earth, basically, and you can get it after a, um, a couple of weeks. Now, I didn't do that to mine. I'm going to bury it in salt and um, let the salt take it out and then throw the salt out. So you can do it that way if you don't feel like burying it. I think, you know, salt, just putting it in salt, burying it in salt in a bowl and just leaving it overnight, you know, can be enough and then of course you recharge it with sunlight or moonlight and then you know if you feel that you need to do it again after a couple of weeks or even straight away you can just do that I mean there's so many women out there doing this and you know it's a shame everybody doesn't know about it it's not I don't think it should just be for crystal crystally crystally people you know crystally women you know I would um like to clarify something for our audience could you spell that for me? Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Spell, spell which? The Yuli one. Yoni. It's a, a Y O N I. Yeah, that's exactly right. Y O N I. Similarly, that means a tush. <laughs> It's a weird name for a tush, but I suppose they needed to call it something. I mean, when I first saw it, I saw a girl, you know, advocating that steamy. I was just like, oh, what a load of new age garbage. But then, you know, really intelligent friends told me that they were using the these wands um, made of these different crystal. And I actually had a wand that I'd bought and I just thought, oh, why did I buy that? So I took it back to the shop and exchanged it. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, get a sort of yoni shaped wand and and try it out and it was you know absolutely amazing but the um I, I used a really really good quality amethyst I mean it was beautiful it was like pale lavender slightly clear and but now it's clear no more it has this black um smoke inside it and it's gone really really dark which is quite horrifying I suppose in a way but I knew I had um stored sexual abuse um, you know, I haven't been really sort of, you know, able to, you know, have a long term partner and really sort of enjoy that part of life. And so I thought mine would, you know, be a, but I didn't really believe in it. So it's quite amazing that it's actually a thing and it's a thing that works, you know? Yeah. And uh, my other question is is to be inserted vaginally or anally no well for a woman obviously if you know i mean for me to not get too graphic i was abused you know by my brother and he you know 
put things in, you know, whatever. I can't say too much, obviously. Um, so it kind of just needs cleansing inside. Um, and also, you know, if you've had an abusive partner who's put themselves inside, I mean, basically, you know, bits of that partner will remain in there, as will your memory of it, as will his energy. And if it's negative, then it will remain there. You know, it's somewhere where... Um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a very precious part of you, um, that does store. So it's basically like a, um, a kind of cleansing. So you do, yes, you do, uh, put it inside you, the wand. Does that answer? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. So, yeah, I wanted to have a big talk with that. I mean, I, I wanted to, obviously, my co-host isn't with me um, right now. So is there any news on my co-host showing up? Because I thought we'd have a to and fro about the the, the male point of view on that. But he, he's not shown up right now. Is that right? Uh, he's he's in here now. We're just waiting to see if his microphone works. So if, if Dumbbell, if you can hear us, if you want to try to do a mic check. Yeah, he must still be working on it because he's not lighting up. I don't even know if he's hearing us. Oh, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> we had a little tiff earlier about not turning up for the show. So I'm here. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so that's the only one. If anybody wants to come to me um, on Facebook for advice about that, I can, you know, totally advise them. I'm thinking of doing an article for women's magazines on it. But as I said, it's really, really hard to get it across to people that don't believe in the power of crystals um, that it might work. So I'm just afraid that it will just be for women that believe in crystal power. And that's a shame because it really is a sort of <coughs> quite cleansing. And it really is something that a lot of women need to do, you know, especially if they've been with abusive partners. I mean, on Facebook this week, there were two two women that one was in hospital. She had had her uh, ribs broken by her partner and um, she was strapped up to a uh, breathing machine, you know, picture of her strapped up. And that was what her partner did to her. And then there was another woman who had um, a boyfriend. She'd finish it and he was stalking her. So... Yeah. Hello? It sounded like I we heard some sound there from DB. Yeah. yeah. It's all happening. Oh, you're, you're late. You're late. Aren't you taking this seriously? <laughs> ah, revenge is a dish best served cold. Bit different when you got a fucked mic, mate. Uh, language, Timothy. I'm not Timothy. My name's dumb ass. <laughs> hey, um, I, Chris, I put a, I, show, an English show, English I, joke. <laughs> I put a link up uh, for the YouTube viewers, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over to the YouTube chat. Hopefully, they'll be able to copy and paste if they want to learn a little bit more about the Yoni Wand. Oh, thank well, you. Don't. So, I don't know um, what's going on with Discord because um, it was not going green on my voice. I, I used the app and it updated a couple of things, but uh, Discord needs to get its its online Google um, thing sorted yeah, out yeah. because anyway, uh, anyway, no not good. too technical because the audience is listening. We don't want to bore them because then they sort of bugger off. So, what do you think of Yoni um, ones? Would you get one for a girlfriend, Russell? What? Would you buy a present of a Yoni wand to a girlfriend? Okay, what is it? Well, you missed the first part. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll tell you off about that later. Um, it is basically a crystal made of, it's it's a wand, and you can buy it in the shape of a, a, a man. And it's uh, rose quartz, um, obsidian. Amethyst, and basically the woman, you know, puts it inside herself, and she clears off past sexual history and any abuse, and it's basically a 
cleansing thing. Do you believe in that or, or not? Well, even if it doesn't work, the belief in it would help the person using it. That's true. You... So it make them feel better. That's right. But you I would... do anything that makes you feel better, I reckon, as long as it's not hurting anyone else. Yeah, no, it's not a perverted thing. I actually, a lot of women, as I was showing, a lot of women are, are using it. And actually, I tried it out for the first time and it did appear. I used a um, amethyst and actually the amethyst turned black after um, half of it turned black. So it just felt like I was downloading all this past um, sexual history, all these bad experiences. They actually started to flash through my mind and then I could feel it seeping into the crystal, like I could just feel it. In fact, the crystal became overloaded at, 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 at one point. Yeah, I've got a lot of sexual encounters I've got to get over with. I just feel so used. So do you think there's a way that men could utilize this kind of thing? Sounds a bit painful, Chris. No, look, um, I'm not. I'm being a bit lighthearted about it. Look, in a serious sense, it's crystals. There's all a mix of vibrations there. I suppose it might even come down to the amount of quartz you've got up against different. Um, uh, you know, it could be really idiosyncratic each each one. So they might vary a vibrational rate and and that sort of rate. So it might be an, it might not be an exact science, but if this helps, if this um. And even if if three percent it physically helps and fifty percent it helps the person because they feel they're doing something positive towards their own attitude, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I just tried it because well, a I'd brought a wand and I could bring it back to the shop and get one of these yoni wands, and b two very intelligent friends that I respected had got one so I thought well there must be something so I wanted to try it and just lo and behold it just started downloading straight away and you know it, I just found it quite amazing and I, I want to write an article for, for the Daily Mail and I think it might get rejected but I'd like to write something so you know women out there that aren't you know just crystal believers you know will buy it and will feel cleansed and will feel refreshed because you know it's nice to just maybe have one partner in life and just have that partner as you know starting fresh not oh yeah there's been 10 guys I mean you as a man Russell does it put you off when you meet a girl and she's slept with 10 other guys first no not at all in fact I um I regard it as a, um, a requirement <laughs> no I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm I'm I, I, the reason I'm not being flippant with with what you're going to say, which is a very intelligent observation, so I'm going to answer it with the with the depth that it um, deserves. So uh, I'm just in a stupid mood, Chris. Excuse me, please, buddy. Um, I think it matters not to me um, when I meet that person. Uh, I believe in monogamy. Um, I believe in loyalty and faithful, uh, being faith, faithful to your partner, um, sexually, even if you're just boyfriend and girlfriend. I mean, that marks, that's a dividing line. That makes it different. And, and um, but I don't, I think, good God, you know, you can't get hung up on every other sexual exploit your girlfriend might have been in in the past and start thinking about it. If that's crossing your mind, you want to give yourself a good clip around the ears and take a look at your attitude because you're, you're starting to behave like a bit of a creepy male. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, do. I I don't agree. Isn't it weird? I'm a girl and I don't agree. I, I think because it's like actually inside a, a woman, I think it's nice if it's a little bit purified because, you know, the man enters a woman. Isn't it nice if you just think, oh, there's a sort of leftovers from Charlie and George and Fred and, you know, doesn't it make you feel like unspecial? No. I've got to be honest. Um, I I think people are having sex at the healthiest they've ever had in the history of the human race. Um, there's more liberty out there for them as well. Um, but there are still these pedophilic um, creatures that go around still um, thinking that they want to push the envelope even more. Um, 
uh, you know, sorry to get onto that subject, but um, no, no, Chris, I'm I'm pretty um, I'm pretty loose um, in my designation. I think when you meet a sort of person and there's um, a sort of chemistry and a magic happens, that that's um, unplannable and and um, and you've got to sort of roll with it, literally, both of you. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I don't agree. Isn't that weird? I, I, I mean, I guess there's men out there that, you know, w would like virgins. Clearly, you know, in the Muslim religion, the 70, the promise of 70 virgins. I don't know. I think if you just can feel a little bit secondhand, you know, and I think wouldn't it be great if there was the kind of thing for men? I mean, OK, we've got it for women. Now we can kick, reboot and refresh and become like virgins again. But um, you know, what about men? Maybe maybe there can be one for men where you kind of put it inside a little hole of crystal and leave it there for 10 minutes and that. Yeah. 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 Um, I was speaking on behalf of every single man on the planet. Um, there's no way I'm putting my junk in that. <laughs> I hear you. No, I, I just wanted to make a comment too. Um, what, what DB said about... Um, having you know finding the right one and having um, a monogamous faithful loyal relationship i think that's what matters most to well i'm not going to say most men because i'm not going to speak for most men because i i know there's a lot of dogs out there but me personally um if i find if i find the right woman and um we have a connection i don't I don't think about what she did in the past because this is this is a new this is a new relationship. You you got to know the person um, in some way, shape, or form before you go into you know a long-standing relationship with them. So um, if it was somebody that I just met and we had a connection, and we it I think in those situations it might be easier because you didn't know anything about their past, or if if you know a little bit about somebody's past and then it clicks with you, um, for me, letting that go and giving myself totally to that one person and being loyal, faithful, that's, that's what matters to me. Um, you know, if the, if the woman feels that she wants to cleanse herself, uh, more power to her, um, that, you know, that just shows that she's making an extra effort for the relationship. Um, I, I, on the other hand, too, now we're going to talk about the tools for men. <laughs> uh, I think there would be some external stuff. I, I just happened to look at the link um, for the website that I put out there, and there's there's some external stuff. It looks like there's some egg-shaped stuff. I think it's supposed to be meant for like internally for the women, but I think you know if you believe in the way if you know believe in how crystals work, it could also be used externally. Sure. We do have a yeah. question from a listener. Um, they would like to know how long do you leave it in? Well, I thought, I mean, I, I, I did it for 10 minutes and m the end of mine wasn't exactly rounded. It was pointed. So I was like a little bit worried that, you know, I'd hurt myself. But I ended up like five to 10 minutes because as soon as I did it, I felt... Um, I felt a downloading and I thought, whoa, how, this is like unbelievable. I actually had these images um, just come into my mind. And, you know, things I've forgotten just flash really quickly. And I felt it just downloading into, so the crystal like kicks off. It kind of does it without, you know, it's absolutely amazing, really. I mean, I know some people out there might not be able to, I mean, I'm sensitive, so I do feel, you know, that kind of thing. And there will be people that, won't have that experience but they can still you know take the healing from it i mean you know like rape victims and and things like that i mean it would be priceless i don't know if my mic's working i hope it is is it yep you're good yeah, yeah. so go ahead go ahead comment Oh man, I had a nightmare, a mic nightmare. Okay, um, I think, I think it's it's um in terms of people are sleeping with crystals and and a lot of people are really into rose crystal. Um, 
when a crystal vibrates, it breathes. Um, think, don't think of time. Just think of breathing in and out, and a vibration out of a crystal, and a vibration in leaves a space um, that can be as big as a barn door, really, when you think fractally. Um, so, good energy and bad energy can both be ingested and um, expounded from a crystal. Um, but then you've also got to be aware that. Okay, let's look at this topic. Can transdimensionals use crystals um, to travel? I mean, old uh, old Islam says jinn use shady light, um, darkness between shade and light, mirrors, steam, dust, the dark, um, everything. They 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 can travel in a frequency that's a little bit thicker and denser, more easier than they can the light. The light they can't travel very well in. So what are you trying to say? Well, we should look at um, crystals as medicine and maybe having them further away from our body and having them inside our body or around our body is a much more um, potent way of using them as a healing agent if they're programmed to heal. I, I think um, we all should look at maybe uh, should we have – some sort of bloody Norton security on our crystals in terms of what's it feeding in and what's it breathing out. Just like coral, it breathes in and out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can't remember now whether I programmed mine or not. I don't think I did. I just looked at it and um, it, it was really, you know, it was amethyst. It was beautiful. It was really clear. So I just kind of got cracked on. I didn't really, um, you know, say I wanted it to do anything, which I know you can do. You can program. I mean, maybe you know, the listeners can sort of say to the crystal, you know, I want you to cleanse me, um, you know, and, and then that way, you know, or maybe they can go to people and they can kind of program it and, you know, they can go in a separate room and do it. I, I, I think there are people setting up websites um, and doing that kind of thing right now. I think it's just kicking off. It's a, you know, it's a whole new thing actually. And I think, you know, women are picking up on it, but it, it, it's, it's good. And I, I hope there is a, uh, something that men can can use as well I, I mean I know that when I meet a partner I really don't like it that they've been with someone else and I certainly don't like it if they've been in love with someone else you know I feel like I don't know I just really don't like it especially if they've been married but, to someone else huh? but that's cool I mean there's a whole movement of no sex before marriage and and um, in, in the Christian order, um, and those people are really good, devout people. Um, oh, I've got an apology to make. Not just to you for biting your head off this morning, Chris. There's yeah, a you bit my I've head listen- off this morning. Oh, uh, well, no, I only had a bit of a nip. It's all right. Hold on, I'll get to you. <laughs> I've got an apology from last week to go, yeah. Oh, do I get a sorry? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you do, but hold on. Um. I called somebody a Bible thumper last week, and I feel even twice as much of a dickhead as I actually am. Uh, well, no, um, I'm pretty much a dickhead. Look, I've got a lot of good Christian mates and and friends and stuff, and I should have chosen my words more carefully and used the word zealot or, or actually um, explained my point in that. It, I think it was just somebody using... And, and bringing up that debunked word to meet their own ends. Um, the Anunnaki haven't been debunked, and, and the scrolls, um, the cylinders haven't been debunked by any no, means. No, but don't, no, don't but I was annoyed mind. with myself because, we, uh, you know, I've got a lot of good Christian subbies and, and supporters and friends, and, and then I just go throwing around blanket language like that. So um, I gave myself an uppercut. Oh, that's, don't worry. So, um, yeah, I know I met a lot of Irish um, when I lived in Belfast and a lot of women who got married, they were just with that one partner. And I have to say, I did think that was really lovely. I mean, it's just awful to think. I think for men, maybe it's worse to know that the woman you're with has been like thrown around by another man, you know, sort of. I don't know. It's a bit. It's a bit funny. Yeah, but also you're you're still mired in a lot of Catholic belief, which is good. I'm not criticizing it. Um, it's a good, strong, staunch religion, and um, like all things, it has a black snake of evil running through it, a, a cabal that um, 
would be so scared of Catholic people finding out because then they really would be hung from the lampposts. Yeah, no, I agree there is evil, but maybe maybe that's a good thing about it, that one thing, that surely when you commit that act, you know, it's really, really, um, it's really, really personal, isn't it? You know, it's really, really personal, isn't it? Make it much more special if it's just the first time and this, you know, neither person has been with anybody else, let alone like loads of men, which I think these days it's like people have been like with hundreds, really. I think if a person feels that way, they could meet thousands of people that feel the same way. Um, some would be varying degrees. Some might be um, a little bit of, ze you know, zealous, overzealous or, or zealous, but some might just be ordinary sensible thinking people like the, the, what you've been putting across with an attitude on something. Um, it's their attitude towards sexuality and it's their absolute right. Um, as long as they're not saying, I'm allowed my right, but you're not allowed yours, um, I find that's a big thing. Yeah, I just find, you know, especially if, if, if a man's sort of been with somebody else and then they've been in love with them, you kind of sit there with them across the dinner table and you think, oh, if it weren't for the fact that Jenny or Susie dumped you, you wouldn't be with me. And it kind of feels a bit shabby at this point, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, but I think that's taken a wrong turn down the road anyway, right initially. I think um, that's a point of, of a triangle that's only going to veer out into a large angle later on through worry and stress, and I think it's false. Because when a man splits up with a woman, um, if he's done it, it doesn't mean, look, a woman can dump you on your sorry ass, but you lift your head up, you take the higher, higher ground and you go, okay, fair enough. You don't moan, you just try and, and get on with it. Um, and you nod and say hi when you're out, you don't be rude, you, there's, there's no sort of sneers and snickers to, to mates or anything like that. It's just uh, friggin, you, you, you treat them like you want to be treated. It's not always going to work that same way back. But when it, when you meet a new woman um if you've been able to give yourself a decent healthy break like that from a woman you've known and everything's healthy if she thinks decently of you and you think decently of her you can progress to meet a new woman who's just as interesting and stimulating as any you met it's not like oh she'll do me for a couple of weeks i'll meet i'll meet no it's not there's guys around like that but it's not that way i mean we all want to meet somebody that we can walk down the road, the road with as octogenarians, you know, and and have that that uh, freaking Christmas card sort of um, existence. It don't always work though. Christmas card existence. <laughs> well, you know what. It yeah, I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. You, know, you reach an age and you think, oh, that will be nice. Whereas when you're younger, you think, ugh, I don't want to be like old with this person, you know. But yeah, oh, I think I, it, I met a person that I wanted to grow old with. You know, it lasted about eight years and it it, it went. But that's tough shit. Uh, tough stuff. I mean, you've just got to, you know, hold your head up. And and a lot of women I've met afterwards haven't really stimulated me as much. Um, in terms of of relationships, so you just you have a good time, have a laugh, and um, and and leave it at that, and and um, that's the way it goes in life to some degree. I think then you need a re-virginization. You need a. You need I've done that. Some, <laughs> you need to get yourself a crystal, and uh, uh, I did three weeks of it. No, I, I um, no, I'm totally cool. Uh, in my attitudes, I figure I'm I'm pretty healthy bloke with my attitudes with women. Uh, my attitudes with gays are the same way. You know, I mean, gay folks were around before homosexuality was around before fire. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're not something in the bushes. <laughs> well, I think obviously for um gay men, it's going to be easy to purify themselves because, you know, they can do the insertion part. So <laughs> it it will it will work for them. So that is... Well, is... well it's not so much a matter of that. Um, with me, in, I live in a really full-on gay part of, of Australia um, and has been for... And 
you know, and I've had gay flatmates that were awesome. I had one that was a schizophrenic psychiatric geriatric nurse. <laughs> and he knew I was, you know, a straight dude. So he was really respectful about that. And he was a bloody funny guy, you know. Um, and then there's these guys that just want to stir crap and dominance around and and they hate women. They hate they, they're just a little seething bundle of hate. And and it's got to stop. You know, we've got man hating um lesbians we've got women hating um gay guys and i hate observing it and um i hate seeing that sort of pretense around me um i think that acceptance is a fine thing wear it well well maybe we can you know we can all use those crystals for healing uh you know i just want to put it out there i mean i will try and write this mainstream article i don't think it will be um picked up that it, that it is really amazing and you know maybe in the end it will just be for victims of incest and rape that you know that they will i, I mean i remember when i was younger looking for something that would make me feel clean so i felt dirty inside and you know here it is really it's arrived 10 years later well, that's, but... well that's brilliant because the way things are going um, you'll be able to put that in an um, artificial intelligence tuner and be able to map the frequencies of it and maybe even possible change the density and frequency of it to suit your um, your biorhythm uh, structure and uh, then use it that way. So I think this medicine, and that's what it is, it seems, will progress. It sounds pretty good because frequency medicine is, you know, it's going to come up big and it's going to heal a lot of people. Yeah, I think this is what this is, really. You know, it's a, like a little movement that started. So um, I, I, I really feel glad that I can talk about it on this show. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to draw a line under it now, unless there's any questions. Is there in the um, live stream? Well, I, I had a comment um, as far as the article. If, uh, if they don't want to put the article up, you can still put it over on WordPress and then maybe... Uh, once they see how interested people are, they may say, hey, Chris, we do want to cover that. <laughs> yeah, that's an idea. That is an idea. I think I will write it because it's quite close to me and I'll, I'll do it strike while the iron's hot, you know, while, while I, I've got it. You know, it's best to sort of put it down when one is enthusiastic about it, which, which I really am. You know, I thought it was absolutely, absolutely amazing. I mean, maybe it was quality of crystal I used. It was really, really it's really also and the amethyst was was really very healing indeed you know yeah um ladybird k uh had she didn't ask a question but she made a comment um that she thinks that this is a very serious subject for women um and i and i agree i, I think it's actually a serious subject for both men and women it is serious, isn't it? Because, you know, I mean, I, I, I got to the point where I was feeling like a bit dirty and a bit sort of secondhand and, you know, it just kind of refreshes. So it is really, it is really important, isn't it? I mean, it is really, really healing. And of course, you know, as well as that going out with an abusive man, you can feel, you know, a bit sort of dirty. I mean, my ex wasn't great. And, you know, I kind of think there hasn't been anybody else since him and it's been 15 years. And I mean, am I carrying his negativity inside me? You know, or was I, was I carrying his negativity? Uh, because when you have sex with someone, it does, you do exchange energy and you do take on their energy. And so, you know, was I carrying his guilt of, you know, what he did and, you know, he, he wasn't a father to our son and, you know, he was like basically, well, we weren't married, what child, you know, and it's like that was sort of a really, really, really horrible thing to do and I beat myself up that, oh, Christine, you, pick, you picked a man like that, what was wrong with you, couldn't you see he was like that, you know, what kind of a man acts like that, you know, you've got really bad taste, bloody blah, blah. And really, that isn't my guilt to carry. That was his, that he's like that, that he decided when I was seven months pregnant that he was in love with another woman and he wanted to go off of her. And that was him. And, you know, for me, sex is sacred. A child is sacred. And for him, 
it wasn't like that, but that isn't my um, dirtiness. It's, you know, it's dirty. It's a dirty soul there, and it, it's not mine to carry. And, yes, I slept with him, but I had no idea that he was like that. And so it, for me, using the amethyst was a release of that guilt as well. You know, it sucked up that stone, that amazing um medicine you know it sucked that away that guilt I've carried guilt and you know I haven't been able to get a, another partner because I, I thought well you know I'm a dirty person you know and I can't be clean but you know I'm not you know I'm clean that that was his and you know it took all that with it I mean it just took all that like some kind of weird um weird super cleaner I mean wow you know like vim <laughs> but gentle you know I mean it just I just found it absolutely shockingly amazing that's wonderful i have done um crystal cleaning cleansing like um on the chakras before but uh yeah this is very interesting yeah it's very interesting i mean I, if it weren't for the fact that i heard from you know two friends that are super intelligent two women um i would have thought oh this is rubbish and oh god what are women doing now that's absolutely crap and rubbish <laughs> but I mean they told me they were doing it and I thought wow you know they're really clever women they're really switched on they know about everything they know about health and you know the, one of them god I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this I don't think she listens to the show um but she um said you know I've been without a man for a long time and when I do go with another partner I want to be really you know I want to be refreshed I want to you know I want it to be an amazing experience so I'm you know, using this. And um, I thought, oh, you know, um, she triggered me to try it. And I just had that amazing experience just of letting go of, of, of so much. I mean, maybe in ancient Egypt times, they, they, they knew about, they knew about this, you know? I would almost bet on it. Yeah. And it's been buried. Um, it's been buried like a lot of things it has been has been buried which is an awful shame um so somebody's somebody's resurfaced it somebody's brought it out there and it's fantastic and i hope the word gets around because it's an awful thing to feel bad around that area i mean it's a really powerful powerful part of us it's meant to be a powerful part of us and, and so many women get um and men get shut down um you know, all these men that get abused at four stores, they go off to these English four stores, they get buggered by, you know, the teachers. What about them? You know, they can't, they have that guilt there. They have shame, you know, they have a feeling, oh, I enjoyed it and I shouldn't have, but I did. That must mean I'm, you know, guilty. And, and you know, to, to think that they have the opportunity to sort of let that go, to sort of, you know, de debrief it or deprogram it or de whatever you call it down into a crystal I mean it's absolutely amazing isn't it absolutely so um anyway I wanted to move on to talk about the uh Menendez brothers I don't know if it's a new thing out there but I I don't know if anybody saw the um documentary out where Eric Menendez is giving his point of view on the killings um if if the listeners don't know about the menendez brothers um they are eric and lyle menendez back in the 90s i think it's the late 90s perhaps it's the early 90s i was living in america at the time and i remember this story these two boys these beverly hills boys and they had rich parents they were super rich they gunned down their parents and Next thing, they were in prison. Everyone's saying how evil they were. And next thing, um, it came out that Eric said that his father was sexually abusing him. And just recently, I think it's recently, I hope it is, it's just come on our TVs in the UK. Eric has, from prison, he's in prison for life with Kyle. He's come out and told the whole story about the sexual abuse by his father. And what happened, he told, this is his version, he told Kyle about it, his older brother, and Kyle then confronted the father, and the father basically had Eric as a concubine, 
and then they believed that their parents were going to kill them. So basically, they then gunned them down. Um, but it was interesting to hear Eric's Eric's um, description of what happened, that he said that basically as he was shooting his parents, it was like um, he didn't know what was going on. It was like he was firing. It was like something else took over him. And it reminded me of the Jeremy Bamber White House Farm killings where he said that he was afraid that that he was going to shoot his parents and eventually he did shoot his parents and he shot his sister shot his sister's children and I just think that um it should be looked into these kind of killings um they do picture them on the Amity the Amityville hover now it has those type of killings and it has the fact that they're taken over by an entity. But I think if you listen to the testimony of Eric Menendez and um, Jeremy Bamba to his girlfriend, uh, Julie Mugford, that they do feel as though something takes them over. So I want to talk to you, Russell, about this, um, this kind of thing that goes on, this taking over and these shootings of parents, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Menendez were funny, weren't they? But they'd done a lot of pre planning, hadn't they, with financial plans to get the um to get insurance and shit. I'm not too sure I have to have to follow that, but um they just walked in and bam bam with shotguns too, made a huge mess. Um I've with Bamba, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Being twins, you you immediately think, were they part of any um, program? Were they part? Uh, because, you know, uh, as you know, the whole Mingley twin thing has been stretched through the MK um, idiom. You mean, you mean, uh, Bamba wasn't a twin. He killed, he shot the twins. Um, no, the other twins, the other twins. Um, that did well, the they're, not, they're not twins. They're not twins. Oh, they're not twins? Oh, they're just brothers. They are brothers, but the father was involved in Hollywood and, you know, he was pretty high up in Hollywood, I think. Oh, man. I, um, there's just so many suspicious deaths and people get ratcheted up to a crescendo. Um, is it vexation? Is it possession? Is it, um, is it just, uh, Goetian demonics? vexing a person and stirring them up to their own little tornado and then you know jumping around with glee because you know they're just crap stirrers you know so it sounds a bit like it and so are the draco entities as well they they take the they take the mickey any chance they can they'll pretend to be this they'll pretend to be that they'll pretend to be angels they'll pretend to believe plearans um they'll people channel stuff and they'll think this is wonderful and they're getting told a lot of rubbish I mean, you can go as far back as, as Peggy Kane that was try, trying to um, make people understand this. Uh, the net that we live in under here is full of lies. Um, we're not prisoners of victims. We're, you know, we're, we're fighting our way out of this tooth and nail and we're winning. But the, the lies and the deception that's involved under this electromagnetic onion skin um, that stops a lot of outside and off-world communication, both physical and, and mental, is slowly getting depleted. Everything you do, um, every every video you post, if it's a matter of one, two, three views, it doesn't matter. It's all going into the big grid that's making this shake. And and if you, if you go, okay, look around you, think around you. People are getting much more of a conscience towards animals now. They're starting to recognise what a disgusting thing bullying is. Um, their more transparency and honesty is is not only being promulgated; it's being respected and 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 uh, and really brought to bear as, as 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 important as it should be in our general lives. So, the vision's clearing, the fog's clearing a bit for folks. Yeah, and I think you know, these people are hated and also people come out with stuff like, oh, they did it for the money. Well, well no, the, these these kids of these rich parents had the money. And one must think about how much, 
you know, a mother, for, for example, I mean, Jeremy Bambert shot his mother in the face. I mean, Eric talked about, you know, I shot my mother up, you know, with all these bullets. Think about, you know, what a mother should be. A mother should be something nurturing or something warm. And, you know, I know my son's never going to turn a, a shotgun on me and shoot me in the face. Um, so one has to look at what these parents did um, to, to, to these boys to make them turn like that and not just turn like that. I do believe very strongly in both cases that, they 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 were jumped into i mean you know they had all this fear i think in both cases they probably were sexually abused i think in bamba's case he probably was too and then of course they you know they have that disconnection from their bodies they're not grounded in their bodies and next thing they're like oh you know maybe i'll kill my parents i hope i won't and then next thing they're finding themselves do it and i think in both cases a testimony of both both men, both young men um, have been, they found themselves doing it. And then after they shot up their parents, they were like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? And then horror, you know, kicking they in. They went and played tennis. They yeah, went no, and played no. tennis afterwards. I mean, they're, um, those two. No, he said, Look, I, he I, said, he said that, uh, no. That's what we've all heard through reporters, etc. But now, oh, okay. um, Eric, yeah, fair has, Eric has come out and told um, the story in his words. And basically, straight after he did it, he was like, oh, you know, he was filled with hurry and wanted to take it back. And I do believe him. I don't think he's just trying to get out of prison because it was the same thing with Bamba. You know, he told his girlfriend, oh, after I've done it, which feels like to me that they have been um taken over by something you know and i don't think in our society we acknowledge that do we so they're these young men in prison that i don't know i think they should be let out really i think eric and kyle have done their time really you know i do i don't agree i think uh they should be in there forever they, I don't think, I, I think what they did, it, now, look, they might be mind control, they might be in there because they're SRA. I mean, yeah, there are big wigs in Hollywood and they had money, but that's not the only people who get into the old Illuminati SRA. It could be buried down the road as a security guard with two or three kids, you know. Like Svali said, have a look, who's leaving a house with the kids in the car at 10.30, 11 p.m. and coming back at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., you know. That sort of thing's happening around in our very neighbourhoods. But um, and and Bamba doing what he did. I'm sorry, I don't care if they're sick. Um, they certainly need to be segregated away from society for doing that. I just don't think um, that degree of murder can be forgiven. I, I, I no matter what the cause. Um, and and yeah, that's basically it with me. I, I just think when people commit a crime that heinous. That um, yeah, and you've got to look. Their lives have changed. They're not fat cats anymore. Um, he might be trying to sell a book just so he can pay off a guard for some more protection in jail because it's getting a bit um tight in there. Well, you know, I, yeah. I I wanted to make a comment. You know, we're we're looking. You know, look at the look at the parents and and especially the dad. Um, very very deep into Hollywood, and we we all know. Um, you know, if you if you just look at TV today, anything coming out of Hollywood is so full of Illuminati symbolism and we and we know what you know as far as Illuminati and uh, the and, and you don't even have to call it MK Ultra okay we we know that how MK Ultra works especially with children when they sexually abuse them over and over and over and over again they start to build these secondary third and maybe more alternates you know and and a lot of times they don't even know um, they're doing what they're doing. You know, this, a, an altar might come up, um, yeah, and, and they, and they don't even know. Um, but you know, their, their parents did this to them. They probably, I, I don't want to advise, you know, say, Hey, they, they did, they did a, the right job, but the, you know, they, they got their parents back for what their parents did to them, but that still doesn't make it right. Um, but we have to understand what, started this whole thing and what caused them that you know the cause and then the effect and then okay maybe talk about okay what happens later 
and I agree with Dumbbell and I agree with uh, Lady Anon, they, there was some planning involved here and that could have been used as an excuse. But in my opinion, they need to stay where they are. Uh, they, they, what they did was heinous. Yeah. I, but was it was it heinous if they, you know, if their father used the son as a concubine? I mean, having been sexually uh, abused myself, I know it does make the most strong anger. Um, you know, it, it, the, the, I, I sometimes think if I was a man, you know, my I have um, killed my parents. It's just, you know, something that's supposed to nurture you has turned around and used you for sex. I mean, think about that. Think about how he was feeling, his father as well. So, sure, um, yeah. Well, we, 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 look, I, it's not just because I disagree with your point doesn't mean I don't really see it. And in fact, I'm really close. It, it's one of those, you know, 90 10 sort of things that, uh, sorry, 51 49 things. Because um, I need coffee. Sorry. Um, I, it's, I think that, yes, if you keep him incarcerated, but I think society should really look at the whole mind control, sexual um, predation thing, and and deprogramming and treatment in um, in prisons because of it. Like um, Fritz has, has certainly got all that sort of subject and and that written up. They don't have to try and do research into it. Fritz has got it sorted. So, you know, bring that into prisons and start to try and deprogram some of these people. And and um, it's not like, oh, punishment, we're going to keep – yeah, I can see the humanity in what you're saying. Um, but, man, if they if they pulled one more trigger, could you imagine? Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I agree with Chris all the way up to the part to where um, – were their altars out or were they out when they planned this, that they planned to kill their parents? Now, this wasn't something that just happened overnight. Well, according to Eric, um, it wasn't planned. He bought the gun because he thought they were going to kill them. And it's quite interesting because there's a guy that took them out on a boat and he says how tense it was between them all. And because Eric told uh, Kyle that his father had been using him this way, Kyle then confronted the father. So they felt that rather than be, uh, because Kyle was going to tell everyone, rather than be outed, um, they believe that they were going to kill, kill them, kill, kill the children. So they brought the guns of self-defense. And then one day when it reached a crescendo, they were scared and they went down there and, and shot them. I think that makes more sense rather than, ooh, let's get the money, let's blow them away, you know? I mean, he grasped himself up. Let's not forget in all of these cases – and in Jeremy Bamba, Jeremy Bamba got away with it. He was out spending his parents' money. He told his girlfriend about it, and then he dumped her. I mean, you don't have to. He was a very clever boy. You know, it, it's not rocket science. If, if you tell someone, oh, I've killed someone, then you dump them. Um, they, they're going to go after the cops. So he grasped himself up. And Menendez brothers grasped himself up. Um, Eric went to a therapist and said he told the therapist. So... I mean, I don't think we can say they're calculating, but I suppose if they do get let out of prison, there's always a chance that they might get jumped into again and might kill somebody else, I suppose, just like the figure on the Amityville Horror. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they're out and and if they've got the vibration, um, just like a crystal in that certain frequency, um, which is idiosyncratic to them, like a thumbprint, um, and that's been used before, it'll be used again. And it could be getting used in jail as we speak at different times, which might help them, actually. Yeah, I mean, the problem is with these, like, as you know, I met the two serial killers, Ian Brady and Kenneth Bianchi. They don't seem to have any resolution, and they don't really seem – they do – Brady got examined by psychiatrists, but I know Kenneth Bianchi in America didn't go near, which is quite bizarre that he – um, you know, murders 13 girls and nobody wants to go near him. How, I mean, how weird is that, really, if you think about it? Um, and, you know, I, I, he he does swap in and out of altar. You know, he's still got altars. He doesn't know what happened to him. He sticks to, oh, I'm innocent because he wants to get out. But, yeah, I mean, they should yeah. be. Yeah. 
picked apart, shouldn't they? Because they do. Absolutely. And the demons, the demons that, um, do you think it was a vexation or a possession with those two? Well, I think with um, with Bianchi, um, he he had a killing altar. Brady had a killing altar as well. And I think what happens with their killing altar, because it's not in the body, so it doesn't really relate to reality. Um, Ken Bianchi's killing altar was called Steve and or whatever he called it, you know, um, he had a killing altar. And I've read the transcript of that. Um, and it was basically like a 15 year old boy and he wasn't in a body and he's basically, I hate girls. You know, I really hate them. They're bitches. I want to kill them. And so you have that sort of side of him, um, that split off and he was tortured by his mother. Again, the sexual abuse, she fiddled around with him, thought there was something wrong down below. And, um, so that, that, yeah. So that part of him, I believe gets jumped into because he had that. Can I quickly interject when you said, oh, I hate girls? And it reminds me of that uh, weird little creep that mowed those girls down in the car. I was at a Virginia university and killed three or four people. And he was doing all these anime type poses in front of his car. He hated bitches and he hated girls. And it would be the same yeah, character. Yeah, it's, it's the same type of thing. I think they, I think at some point they get jumped into. And I think if you take the part of these killing couples, like Brady was part of a killing couple and Kenneth Bianco is part of a killing couple, they actually have the ability to almost like hypnotise the person that isn't really involved in the killing, you know, the sort of more docile one. And that gets covered up. Like Kenneth Bianchi, Angelo Bono was supposed to be the dominant one because he was 45 and Kenneth was 25. But Kenneth had this entity come into him and the entity was able to manipulate Bono so much he brought him out right. on these killing sprees and actually the entity had control of the body for a short period of time six six months where they had the killing spree and then it kind of um came in and out of him but again he was someone who more or less grasped himself up he killed on his own doorstep and you know next thing um you know he was arrested bloody blah so I, you know, I when we talk about like um, an entity, from as far as I can tell, and the things that I've looked into, um, it's very, very, very rare that an entity could jump into somebody's body to take control. I think more of what's happening is when we when we talk about an entity, entity, it's more of another altar, and and the altars. Um, I'll have, you know, a different personality, a different, uh, a different level of whether they're good uh, or they're bad or indifferent. And I, I, I would hesitate to say that they were entered by an entity. Um, and I mean, just from articles that I've read and even um, exorcists that have talked that they even say that it's very rare. If anything, there might be some vexing going on, but the vexing would cause a different altar to come out. That that's kind of where I'm looking at. I'm not. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't really. I don't really see that an entity is because, like I said, it, from what I've read, it's very, very rare that um, an entity could actually, or, or or a demon, or whatever you want to call it, could actually enter into somebody's body and take control. Because that. That's a good point because, like Chris said, um, they'd been subject to sexual stresses at a young age. I mean, the Illuminati tries to sexually abuse their their kids at three and seven because, biorhythmically, it's um, an age of imprint. So, um, what you said is, and and if the vexing occurs, well, if it's vexings by a Goetic demon, they're, they're really into the whole religion thing and, and uh, they hate God and uh, Christians. But, um, and also they hate uh, black Wiccans who, who leave the craft, et cetera, et cetera. But um, with the uh, want of a better word, uh, Draco entity, it's there just to stir crap and push, and, and basically anything it can do to push a new world order agenda, um, which is the alien agenda, basically. Um, it it will help to do if if that means if that means uh, vexing a person 
and and as you say, maybe vexing a person to bring out the altar that has already been appropriated to run into a school with a gun or run into a right mark with a gun. Um, but I think I think with point. um I think with like Bianchi and Brady and, and a few others, you look at their crimes and you do see a lot of antichrist activity. <clears throat> For example, um Bianchi, when he um, tortured them with electricity, he did it on the palms of the hands, like you know where the stigmata are. And Brady, um, when he killed the young girl, he made a pose naked in the sign of a, um, sorry, the crucifix, you know, with her arms out. Oh, um, a little bit. Yeah, that's go. Cool. That's demon. Yeah, and they don't have any, um, you know, you, they aren't religious, and you can't, you know, see, but you do see those kind of um, little evidences so they, they, that there is they that. What? They, sorry, mate. I was um, just keen to ask you a question, too keen to get the question to you. Um, so they weren't religious practices, uh, practice sores, no, no, those no, two guys? No, the, no the, the, they, they weren't. Neither of them were. They were atheists. Both oh, of them well, were atheists, yeah. That sort of supports the theory of, um, of uh, demonic um demonic fixation of an altar's yeah actions. it does and, and and also um uh jeremy bamba left a bible on top of his um sister and it was open at a certain page it was a certain verse and so there was this house you know full of blood the two children were killed in their cots um sheila the model was shot um the parent the mother was shot in the face and the father was beaten to death with the other end of the shotgun and so you've got this house that's like you know house of horror basically and yeah, the, the bible was left out on top of um sheila that was the last thing was done and a um crucifix so that yeah that was all um you know the brady thing of course they had that and the same with bianchi they always seem to have that and of course in mk ultra and satanic ritual abuse don't they always the altar that they pull out the core altar to use for you know to hypnotize or whatever to make into a slave don't they attach a demon to it i thought that was um what always goes on they attach a demon so the um super soldier whatever you want to call it has that psychic power like i'm um, in my own case you know working for the media i had that psychic power when i was working for them i i you know, I earn a six-figure sum because I I was using psychic powers that I don't really have access to right now. But that part of me that, again, I don't really have access to right now had a psychic power. Okay. Um, I don't go with the super soldier term. I, I find it a little bit Marvel Comics. Um, not not I'm not taking the pee. Anybody who uses it or wants to, it's just um, the, the term I use is enhanced individual. Um, because what's happened is you were in the programs, yep, blonde, blue-eyed kid. First of all, that will make them look at you because that physically signifies a density. Um, if you're going to look into deep the way they're thinking, it shows a density of um, our closeness to soul source that are able to fish out. Your soul source is off-world most probably, and, and your vibration like a crystal is at a certain resonance and frequency. And because of that, um, they can enhance the natural psychic powers you've got. Look, we're not in 72, 73. I remember that old black and white footage of the Russian program, the woman with the with the matchbox under the glass, and and that's real McCoy. I, I mean, a lot of that program was real McCoy. It comes from the whole MK thing as well. Um, uh, it went to the American program where they used pilot experimentation and dumped them in ice water till they're almost dead. That was MK. That was just the disguise for it. Was the whole pilot program um by using these and sexual abuse at, at an age of three and seven um uh they can compartmentalize the mind and they can make the mind and and what do they give to these kids when they're reading and they're starting to give them belief patterns to follow and structures to be they're going to give them kids books so they need that whole disney element and like catcher in the rise used later for the assassins program uh, Alice in Wonderland is used as a gateway to
to a lot of programs. You've got um, an MK program and you've got SPY programs. But what they need to do first is get that young individual's um, um, ability enhanced so they can call on it and make it perfunctory to their their, their will. Um, so they they bring that person up in, a, in, in an amount of constant stress, um, constant nightmare, not in phase, out phase, not really knowing if, did that happen? Didn't happen, didn't. And so self-doubt creeps along. So they keep the person on one foot. Again, it's, that's their little off-balancing act. They do it with every every thing they face. They try and keep it off balance. So then they will go and look at that, um, as that person grows, look at that that person's ability. Now, I say this because you, you, you were on that big figure sum when you were at the papers. You said you could run your own hand along a bed and, and get a hunch and get a story. Well, that's your enhanced ability, part of them. That's part of your super soldier ability. And and um, and if people are thinking it's leaping, you know, craters on the dark side of Phobos with lightsabers, you know, think again. There's different things going on here. There's elements to all that off-world thing, but I don't want to branch off and waffle even more than I am now. Well, so they they use um they use a demon, don't they? They attach a demon in, in that kind of thing. Yes, yes, but you're in the belief pattern that the demon has the power. Again, you own your own power. You are uh, have abilities that were enhanced that would have been bloody strong by the stage anyway. Um, if they hadn't got hold of you for the projects, uh, in a project, um, and same as Max, and so these were enhanced and um your psychic ability, your empathic ability, um, which is at a stronger vibration than normal, and your your um, your en enhanced abilities, just uh, different ones were enhanced through that process. Um, then you went out um, into basically where they steered you, Chris. Um, can I put that, um, can I put that up as a suggestion? Is, is basically where through press, stressor and social um, manipulation, and different contacts, they steered you towards a useful purpose. And you were bloody good at it. In fact, you were good at enough at it that it saved your life because you were burned, but you weren't killed. And you won't be. Yeah, well, there's the court case going on, as you know, up, up in the high court um, in the UK. I probably will be um, burnt with that. Da, 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 da. You can't, no. No, no, no. Delete, delete, delete that negative statement immediately. Thanks. And and you can't be thinking along like this. It, it, no, it, these things that are going on with you at the moment are, are nasty little snippets of an impotent enemy. Okay. Let them snap at your heels. Look at them in, in, in a dust bowl as you're driving around your rear view mirror, mate, because they're impotent. Okay. These, these, uh, they had their crack and it didn't do them any good. All right. And, um, all the negative things you come up because you do wander on the line of worry a little bit too much, but fair enough. I would be too. And I'd be, I'd be concerned, but you've got to realize that these are impotent dogs yapping at your heels and um, be kind to animals, but just don't worry about them. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, back to, um, back to Bianchi. I, I, I really do think that um, he, his, altar his killing altar which which i met i i went and sat with him 16 hours two two days with the sole purpose of 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 getting hold of that altar and having a good old look at it and it eventually came out after they gave us coloring in to do and um i eventually saw it um and felt it it was like you know like like a teenage boy i mean he did have altar, other other altars i mean one was a bit like a nazi unless that was the killing one um but i don't think it w was all him you know as as you remember i talked to you about uh mengler and how ian brady had an altar that was like a nazi um yeah sorry i didn't talk about I, I didn't talk about the demon attached thing. Yeah, yeah, and the Nazis are good, uh, interesting able too. Sorry, please carry on. I interrupt. Yeah, and uh, Bianchi, oddly enough, <laughs> had that same altar, that same flavor. It was like a flavor. I mean, he didn't start coming out going, no, no, you're not talking Zermans like that. Um, it was like I was sitting with him and suddenly I felt it and I felt that 
twang of almost like I was at Nuremberg trials. And I'd felt that with Brady. And of course, they both used yeah, torture. Well, they true. both tortured their victims. Um, they'd gas them as well. I mean, how much more like Mangler can you get? They gas them and they injected yeah, yeah. them. They'd done what yeah, Mangler had done. And I smelt him. I smelt him. Um, yeah. So how, how do you explain that? It's part of your enhancement. Um, another journalist could have sat there and just uh, looked at the 3D story in a matter of facts and sheets on paper when he did this, he did this. But you were there to look behind the veil for some reason um, and confront his demon. That was That's why you felt such a manifest desire to be there. Same as with the other. Um, the other and, and I'll actually say the other poor bugger. Because these vessels are just, oh man, they're they're Draco buses. They're not just like demon taxis. They're they're um, just so full of guns. Yeah, they are. But I spoke to Fritz Springmeier um, after, and he said that because it was Mengler that thought up the programs, that Mengler inserted himself into the programs. So it was almost like on The Walking Dead, you know, where they all say they're Negan, that he wanted to become immortal so he put himself into the program so when they are putting these yes. programs onto these boys they are putting in Mengler as well and that would make sense with the torture of both those particular serial killers yeah uh, and people go uh, and there's that convenient word copycat isn't there um in the press but but um that can be looked at um, from a lot of ways if you want to get into it but yeah, the whole Nazi angle and the Mengele angle, uh, he is rife in the MK Project in America. Um, the whole paperclip thing, Dr. Green, this is um, – it's it's one of the biggest stories that's going to come out that's bubbling under there, um, just what's been done under the MK program. Uh yeah, and definitely, definitely, um, you know, I, I'm writing a book at the moment called The Soul Stealers, and, you know, I'm putting this all in there. Um, and definitely Mengler was, I had flashbacks as well of being a twin in Nazi Germany, and literally not just slight flashbacks, but like major ones, uh, one where I was just crying, crying, and I basically was a twin, and I had a twin, I was called Hans, and my twin I was a boy uh, my twin was Clara and we would go into Mengler and he would basically torture us and she um, told me to speak to the angels she said speak to the angels and then you'll feel safe and I said to her you can't tell him you do you you do that and um, basically she went in there and he tortured her to death and she came out dead and I got my strength from her um, to talk to the angels. So that, I mean, I think this Mengler character is like a warlock. It's not like a normal man. Not, not like oh, a no, man. no, no. He's a, it, Mengler is just an avatar. It's just a host. Uh, this, this creature Mengler um, spacesuit, it's a vessel. Um, that's a, it's a really, really strong... Any anything that that entity turns up in is going to be powerful and really dark. Yeah. So what is he like? An archon or something that likes? Oh no no no. It's no, an no, alien. Alien. No, it sounds like with the, with the religious stuff. It sounds like it's Goetian demonic. Well, why does it like the? But children? really, really, really old. Why does it like the experiments? Or oh, how much pain can the child take? I mean, that seems like a grey or, or something like that. Goetian, no, Goetian, the demons, the fallen ones, um, the, the things that are manifested into 3D out of the fallen ones who are in a fugue state prison, basically, but their energy has manifested different utterances. Um, they're called demons. They're transdimensional energies. Um, they can, um, they can, and, and, and some of that's iconic form. When you look at the Nuremberg rallies, um, that's Archon, 
uh, that's archonic energy. That's like a black, dirty, great, horrible fog over a whole lot of people. Um, the whole foaming at the mouth, um, blatant, um, I'm sorry, pussy hat wearing, you know, I, fair enough, people have their say and say it loud and strongly, but this whole crazed, you know, thing, that that's Babylon energy. That's the energy of Crowley's Mate of the Beast uh, that Jack Parsons and, and Freda Rach brought through. Um, through but the didn't, 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 didn't they didn't they pick up on a gray because it wasn't lamb l a m that's the anti divine feminine is is babylon basically it's it's uh, anti a lot of good things um yeah she's a real piece of work but yeah so when you why, mention lamb just... when you mention lamb well that's one of the most uh, or, first original drawings of, of basically a gray it, it could have quite have been a bio entity being driven by a higher source sent to give him a message he did um he did auto writing for a day or two after that continuously i think chris Oh, right. Um, interesting. But, I mean, why the torture? Why the, oh, let's see, doesn't it match with the greys? You know, demonic. Really Galatian demonic. Um, the fallen ones, demo the fallen ones hate humans now. They, yeah, like, they hate ambivalent about them anyway. But um, they despise uh, God, the one, um, the one who sent them the creator energy they despise everything religious and they despise um everything human um so they take great joy in any form of attack they can get oh i see i think it needs more investigation it is i just wonder you know why that sort of um experiments and these two serial killers carried on that sort of experiment kind of thing i just kind of find it um it's just for sheer demonic pleasure um of for the demon you know you've got an old demon there it hates these these cattle beasts it hates what they believe in it hates the fact that they like art and humor and joy and pleasure and its energies now are just everything of that is the opposite um, yeah, why does and it the people that worship why, the, the people why? that worship his type of energy also believe that joy is pain and, and death is birth, you know? Why in that case um, does it care how long it takes to die? How why does it care how, how much pain um, you know, how much electric shock it can take? I don't know, it just feels like experiments to me oh it's just, it's just it's just using one of the cattle to kill another one of the cattle for you know maybe it was bored you know i i mean i take more confidence in saying something like that after i've read that um that six foot five guy who who uh, looked at twenty five thousand exorcism victims and and um and his understanding i defer to um about well he didn't he, he doesn't understand um, how dare I say he doesn't understand God? Um, he he isn't into the whole Draco side of it, um, that transdimensional side. But he talks about demonic entities, and and um, he really knows his stuff. Who's who's that? Um, the writer. I read out a, a bit of his story last week, um, talking about demons and um, and what he's done in his career. But I mean, that, that goes into the Anunnaki, you know? Um, we've got the same thing. People saying Anunnaki are denim, uh, de denemons. De -ne 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 and uh, uh, Anunnaki are this. I think otherwise. What do you think? Are you there, Chris? Sorry. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, yeah, interesting. I wanted to talk about the Anunnaki, but I, I'm fading. I'm fading. I haven't eaten, so I'm fading a little bit. Well, go grab a piece of toast. <laughs> you know, hey, can I read this out? Yeah, go ahead. Enki and Le Enlil. If you're learning about the Anunnaki, uh, first I want to say that this is from an excellent site called uh, www.anunnaki.org. Um, it's it's a pretty general structure, but it'll give it a couple of things when you bounce off. Uh, Enki and Enlil. If you're learning about the Anunnaki, two names you're going to hear a lot are Enki and Enlil. 
While there are a number of central characters in the myths and legends of the Anunnaki, much of the action revolves around these two sibling rivals. In this article, I'm going to give you a crash course on the mythology of Enlil and Enki, but this is a complex topic, and I do not want to jump into it without laying the initial groundwork. So here are the absolute basics, just in case you're brand new. When we talked about the Anunnaki, we're referring to ancient gods of Mesopotamia, but depending on who you ask, the Anunnaki may also have been alien visitors from a planet called Nibiru, which is a long orbit around the sun. Naturally, the space alien theory doesn't fly in the mainstream, but it was popularized by a Russian-born American order named Zechariah Sitchin. Okay, Talking more okay. about um, as with many, many other polyistic religions, the Sumerian pantheon consists of a number of gods who are all related to one another. Sounds a bit royal family. It's easiest to describe the shape of this family tree by starting with Anu. Anu is also known as An, the creator, the great father of the sky. He is the original supreme deity in the pantheon, lord of all other gods. He loses this position. Uh, as the Sumerian tale unfolds, passing it off to Enlil and then in Babylonian law to Marduk. You'll notice that these Anu is not the first god in the family tree. His parents are two primordial gods, Anshar and Kishar. If you happen to be versed in Greek mythology, you can think of these primordial gods as being a bit like the Titans who preceded the ancient Greek gods after the Greek gods overflew, uh, overthrew the Titans. Um, um, Returning to Anu, Anu's two consorts are Antu, great mother of the sky, and Ki, the earth mother. Both give him children. Ki gave birth to Enlil, lord of the air and the earth, guardian of the tablet of destinies, to start. <laughs> and Nin Kursag, lady of the mountain. Antu's child was Enki, lord of the earth and the waters, also known as Ea. Yeah? What do you reckon, Chris? Yeah, um, I was talking to Robert Stanley about, you know, he met Enki or said he spoke to Enki. Um, well, he's an expert on, on a lot of subjects like that. He's, he, um, guys like Robert Stanley, they really know this stuff when you're getting down to the tablets and stuff. Um, but yeah, sorry. No, it's just interesting because I said I had that encounter that, you know, I came out of my body and, and, and journeyed and basically went up through different layers and I encountered a, um, I saw a giant man, it was really a giant, having a um, battle with a, looked like a giant lizard. And um, he said that was Anu. I said I basically felt a feeling that it was father. And he said that sounds like it is Anu. But I got the communication that it was Odin. It's quite confusing not really knowing who's who and different gods and Yahweh and this one and Enki and Enki. Oh God. <laughs> There's just the one, mate. The one. And um, yeah, but is Yahweh. is that Odin or is it Anu or is it Yahweh? I mean it's all yeah, of them. Yeah. They're all of it. Parts of it. Oh they're, I see. Ava they're avatars of, of a fractal. Oh, in, I see. Are they? In philosophy and thought. But um, you see Odin with the left eye, Horus. Odin always goes around with his two crows and his wolves, and, you know, he's lost his eye. I mean, um, it's Horus. And, uh, there's, there's just a lot of things going on with avatars and religions. And um, I've come to the conclusion that um, good on them. <laughs> if people are, uh, are getting on with what they worship, you know, and it's bringing them strength and joy, and peace of mind get stuck in the minute you start hurting another single um existing soul through your actions then you've got to be questioning yourself if you don't first someone else will soon yeah i just found it interesting like enki and and enlil and enki enlil was the one who created us as a slave race and it does make sense to me that we're a slave race because it doesn't human life doesn't feel right like I just went to the shops and I was driving around and everything is gray and it's wet and you just get soaking wet my feet were soaking wet everything's just miserable and I just thought is this really right that we're having this life on the surface of a really wet planet I mean it just feels like human life is not actually really right and so it made sense to me about these two um Enki and Enlil um on these Sumerian texts as written about by 
Sitchin, um, that we were created as a slave race. And then one of them, Enki, came as a serpent in the garden and wanted to educate humanity, but we've kind of twisted that round. And so now we've become like clever gerbils, clever hamsters, and so we're a bit better. Huh? Yeah, oh, that's yeah, good good way of putting it. Um look, uh, uh there was definitely monatomic mining, a uh, gold mining going on, you know, bits of Sitchin's got bits there, um David Ike's got bits there. Um a lot of people have got really, really good um just great info to add. Um myself, I have my own way of looking at it. Uh but it's, yeah. um, uh, as I wanted to ask you about these serpent gods, because there's a lot of this serpent. I mean, is that because Enki, no, they said, I read online um, about um, Enki started the Brotherhood of the Snake. Now I'm wondering, was he a snake? Why the snake? Um, the snake They're all thing. snakes. They're all snakes, mate. They're reptilian. So the Anunnaki are reptilian. Oh, that's my opinion. I mean, doesn't make it the truth. It's um, and my my opinion is that the Anunnaki are a, a slightly out of dimensional creature that was occupying a planet that was dragged out by our sun when the sun came out of its nursery. Oh, they say four and a half billion, like air quote, years ago. But what? It's time anyway. But um. As it came out, it brought out a an out of dimen a, a planet that wasn't for this galaxy. Thus, it was out of dimension, and, and its creatures were and, and well progressed on, even at that stage to a certain degree. And um, I think it's on a thirteen and a half thousand year orbit. Some people say it's three and a half thousand, but it's what they call the destroyer. And but uh, they're noticing now, and and look. The astronomers that have piped up and said something are usually killed off by the Vatican or, um, or you know, they're silenced in some way. UFO, UFO guys have been killed in the last three to four years. You know, there's different information that's uh, worthy of murdering a lot of people, and it doesn't really need to be that way. It's um, it's a really confronting thing. But the bull's been set in motion for a while now. I mean, um, and and slowly, bit by bit in their busy lives, even ordinary people are going to be able to string a little bit of this info together. Uh, it's They're too busy, though. And and so, you know, you can't blame them for just, yeah, okay, yeah, good. But that's why a few of us have got the time to be able to string some of this info together for them so they can look at it. So, right. so, um, so reptilian isn't the same as a snake, though. It's not the same. No, it's, you know, we're, we're working on our, Tearing on our human database of words, um, and 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 when you say a word, you get a visual, as right? Um, so that to invoke the word, you have to use audio. Um, you have to use two strips of muscle banging against each other in your throat. Well, you know, I mean, as we progress, we won't need to do that, and there'll be a billion type of imagery to be able to conjure out of a thought, as opposed to a word. Um, Saying reptilian is the closest we've got because we've got animals that look like that, which they look like that because they're highly content of Anunnaki, uh, of um, Draco, because Anunnaki were the DNA masters. They made us. They made different versions of us. Um, Enki, uh, I get my name. Excuse me because I get my names wrong all the time because I'm racing along. But um, he, you know, that's the Prometheus who was, you know, sentenced to have his liver ripped out by John Eagle every day and poor old Sisyphus who has to push this dirty great big bloody boulder up a hill and see it rolled down every day. I mean these are also um, representative of planets and so is Enki and Enlil and so is Marduk and Tiamat and um, the whole collision and the fight and everything. So it's also astrology and metaphor. Um, it's not about a royal family as such so what do you think the snake actually means in the brotherhood of the snake what, what do you think it means brother the snake are the, are the people with knowledge that know of um off-world control of, of this bipedal vessel um the kidnapping of souls to uh 
have in these vessels, the imprisonment of souls uh, thereafter to be able to return to these vessels to remain a working unit. And uh, and when the real soul projection should be getting out from under this electromagnetic onion and uh, being able to progress um, on the soul path that that, that soul is intent to with, with connection to the Akashic and, and um, the abilities that are natural to it, um, including the ones that you are EI enhanced individual by because in your 3D spacesuit here you still have retained some of those qualities that you had in your soul source, you understand? I mean, there's yeah, billions, no, I, I, I billions and billions of souls on this planet, you know? Some are, 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 are you know, but I won't go, but there's billions and they all have different talents and they're all empaths and they all see it as a wee bit woo-woo in the way of, of getting the job done and getting the kids to school and, and fair enough. <laughs> you know, nobody has to think outside the box and try and think of, of quantum physics as it relates to a cult and, and frequency and vibration. I mean, there's a lot of people doing that, though, and there's, um, there's some no, really I, sharp I, ones I, out there. I meant, um, what is a snake, the, that bit? What, what is a snake? It just means reptilian. But what part of reptilian? I mean, they could say reptilian. It means it, it's representative of the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki, oh, who, yeah, uh, the Anunnaki who who brought themselves forward and lied um, because they, mate, they're insidious creatures. Uh, they, um, oh look, I'm a god called Moloch. Chuck a few babies on the boiler, will you? It's it's just, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not being flippant, but it's it's his thing was sacrifice of of um, ingestion of of young virginal souls through fire. That's Moloch's gig. And he's also represented by an owl here, and it's what they what they uh, get down and worship at Bohemian Grove every so, two years. So, what about the Indians? Because they have things called the Nagas, and they have these pillar palaces. That yep, same them. thing, same thing, but just different interpretation through the Terran spacesuit of what they are. Because remember, we have a Commodore sixty four, and I'm not putting humans. We are amazing creatures, and and uh, we're not only using an nth of our brain. And when you think the real magic exists, is right there in front of you. Because every time a synapse fires off a charge, there's a little bit of magic happens in your brain because there's no tissue carrying that message. It's just, you know, if you want to get really microscopic, it's just, you know, there is thin air that that message is traveling through. So, you know, uh, frequency, energy, and electrical vibration, you're all creatures, we're all creatures of that, and, and we're susceptible at the mercy of the moon, too, because we're wa so watery. <laughs> we're just watery little bloody miners that run around that can um, breathe oxygen okay without dying immediately. It's all good. So they must be, they must be serpents. I mean, we say reptilians. Really, maybe they're serpents. They're... Um, a bipedal, they're, they're bipedal like us, their original form is like us. I think if you jumped out of your body now and took a taxi to um, a certain place where you're from um, and looked in the mirror, you'd realize I'm standing on two bloody feet, you know. Um, it's a general, it's a general form. But yeah, look, um, I want to go, I'm just going to read this out too um, about reptilians. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm trying to get, I'm using my um, app for Discord and I, I've brought up a page. It's all good though. I'm off. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, reptilians have actually popped up in science fiction for the years. I'm in again. They've been written about by Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton, Smith, and H.P. Lovecraft. Sometimes real life mimics fiction, but more often fiction mimics real life. Could it be the inspiration for these stories runs deeper? When Robert E. Howard's wrote The Servant Men in his story, The Shadow Kingdom, in 1929, he was actually inspired by an idea presented by the co-founder of the Theosophical Society, Elena Blavatsky. We're going to hear a bit more of her about her as we go on with shows. Uh, Blavatsky's grip was a secret doctrine, and in it she talked about dragon men who might once have inhabited a lost civilization called Lemuria. Already we're getting out of the realms of fiction and are now transversing a landscape where mysticism, archaeology, world history, and astronomy intersect. 
Delving deep into the occult law, you'll find mentions of reptilian beings time and again. These beings crop up way too frequently to be a coincidence. David Icke's theory of reptilian elite. If you want to learn everything there is to know about reptilians, David Icke is your go-to guy. If you've been around the block a few times in conspiracy circles, then you have doubtlessly heard his name. David Icke offers a lot from conspiracy theories, and his life and career were pretty mainstream, and it goes on about David for a bit there. Um, in 1990, and everything changed. He was standing at a, a newsstand. Uh, Icke felt drawn towards a book written by a psychic killer from Brighton named Betty Shine. Eventually, he visited her and told him he had a prediction for him, that he would become a great spiritual healer. And in my opinion, he is. From that point on, he's not a healer, not. though. I think his work's helping and healed a lot of people. Um, he's lifted a lot of veil and, and, and focused the camera lens a bit. But, you know, um, I like the likey. From that point on, it was down the rabbit hole I could experience one strange event after another. Eventually, he was invited onto a TV show called The Rogan and Year. We know what happened. Talk about the reptilians and the biggest secret in '99. It was his belief that the Anunnaki gods of Babylonia were, in fact, a race of reptilian aliens who hailed from the constellation Draco. And not only did they walk the earth as gods in the days of yore, but they still walk among, uh, among us today as shapeshifters. Ike is not the first writer to suggest the theory of ancient astronauts. Others who have come before him included Eric von Daniken, who wrote Chariots of the Gods. And if you haven't got that book, grab it. It's fantastic. It's um, it's one of the biggies. And Zechariah Sitchin, who penned Divine Encounters in 1995. He noted that re reptilians believe not only come from another star system, but also another dimension. According to David Icke, the universe is actually a multiverse, and the different dimensions occupy the same space, but are only accessible one, in our case, three at a time. If you could push through dimensions, you would find other objects and species occupying the same space you are in now. So the reptilians come from the Draco constellation, but not our Draco constellation, I write. So they inhabit the fourth dimension, which is just one dimension over from our own world. Having crossed over, they can manipulate us to their own ends. This can who, who, sorry, can I, I've got a question. Who is it comes from Aldebaran? Uh, they're Draco. Essentially, I mean well, special it, special ones. Is it is it Al Aldebaran or is it Aldebaran? Oh like yeah, sorry, Aldebaran. you're saying Aldebaran. Yeah, Aldebaran. Um, I just go Aldebaran because it's easier. <laughs> oh, sorry, is sorry, that what is that a special group of them or what? Well, it's a, it, it, um, well it, yeah, it's a group that we're communicating to the Thule Thul Society. Um, and through those psychics working there and Blavatsky and, and a lot of work, they was heavily influenced. Yeah, it seems that we're having some technical difficulties with uh, the Discord servers. Uh, hopefully, oh, hopefully it'll write itself here. But this is recording so we can post it, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's still yeah, going. It's still so carry on. So they were the group that spoke to the Nazis, the um, the ones from Aldebaran. Yes. Why? Now, what What did they particularly want? Were they a special? What was special about them then? They wanted a massive gate opened, and we're not talking um, just uh, like the energy needed that would open a gate. They, they wanted a gate that they could bring a lot of big, big, big stuff through. Um, and um, they wanted to try and do that. See, war is, um, is a form of sacrifice by proxy. Um, not the old uh, uh, Judaic law uh, and that, but th this is it, it's energy, energy from a war and, and extreme bloodshed of violence can be harvested. And it can be transmuted and utilized. And and also you've got um, CERN as a part of this. Um, a lot of carry on as a part of this, Chris. Um, again, some people would um, big pretty strongly to differ with me, and absolutely cool. I understand. So where where are they in relation to the Anunnaki, the ones from Aldabaran? Well, they very could be Anunnaki themselves. I mean, when you talk of um, there's a lot of distance between planets and, and uh, you know, you're not just talking, jump in the car and grab a packet of chips. It's like you've got to, you're going to need wormholes going through and, and, and um, 
to be able to travel. So there's different, really uh, different types of species of the draconoid representation. Yeah. Uh, and, and, oh, carry on. And with, with that would be political um, because they're very structured, they're very pyramidical uh, and rank orientated in what they do um, uh, in the way that they come through here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, and uh, they could very well be part of the whole Anunnaki push. But what I think is that you need a send and receive signal of the same variance on both ends to be able to complete a wormhole as such. And what they were sending out was unable to be matched here. Um, in frequency so, so, wise. So, 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 they're, so they, they're trying with CERN, but I don't even think that's working. That's actually been uh, <laughs> that's so, been mm. it's been stopped a couple of times actually, CERN, just at the right time, like so, December, so December one, the twenty first and two twelve, it was stopped. So um what did they want to open a gate for? They just wanted to come down here, did they? They want to come down to eat your liver, mate. Can't I mean, they find I'm, food I'm, anywhere I'm, else? Yeah, they, they haven't discovered cornflakes yet. Uh, they, um, you can guarantee that these creatures, um, they're not going to be the gorn thumping around, you know, um, trying to type with his three claws on a keyboard. No, there are uh, these uh, are specific into um, a specific race that um, is part of the whole controlling thing that's going on now, mate. It's just that their control is off world and on world um but it's all part of a structure that's been broken and um nothing happens fast here it's like walking through cold molasses so a blink of an eye can take a hundred years so what's happened through the victory in um in america uh, in, uh, over germany basically in those forces um well victory antarctica is chock full of them but um and and uh and has been promulgated to like the Griada Treaty in 1953 when Eisenhower met with offworlders. He'd already been offered the ability to get all the good help and, and uh, progress with energy and power that was needed. You didn't need to go the nuclear option and you needed to drop weapons and, and go drop nuclear and, and start to, you know, get your spiritual act together. He, they denied that, and they went with the greys and the draco that gave them the yellow book and all these great little toys um, that would uh, mean that if they kept them themselves, which they were totally intended to do, they'd be able to basically control the world um, the way they have. Um, and, and the massive thing about the time that we're in right now is that that whole plan has been ruptured. And it got ruptured when Hillary Clinton didn't win that election that day. And it got and it's been ruptured all along the line by the QAnon team and by Trump and by different world politics and and by things that are going on, and this you know this a lot of people there we go it's the last thing they hate Trump's guts fair enough but he's batting for the good guys I'm telling you and uh, that's my strong belief my opinion alone oh well no my uh, millions of people's opinion so where do the fallen angelic come in are they the Anunnaki, they're the same, one and the same. Excuse my ignorance. No. The, the one has powers. They call them angels. Um, they, uh, But, you know, a certain amount were meant to be able to correct the wrongs that are there and correct the wrongs that are, it, it happened in other places, and um, they succumbed. Robert Stanley has has some interesting uh, uh, things to say on black matter um too that uh, I found quite interesting. But they succumbed and, and their um their basic thought pattern was that of the Draco and and um you know nice. Butch Cassidy might, and the Sundance uh, Kid might, of sheer evil. Might the Draco be lost angels? They sound like them because okay, you've got. Didn't you have the fallen angels started having sex with the daughters of man? Well, this is what the Anunnaki did. They experimented with us and basically made us into. So isn't it likely that the Anunnaki reptilians are fallen angels? Um, no, I don't think so. Sorry, I, Lady Anna. I believe that they are one and the same because the word Anunnaki means those who from the heavens came. So in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, 
the fallen angels are the Anunnaki. And they're the ones who came down and started tinkering with our genetics. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree too. It's, of course they're the same. They're doing the same old bullshit, aren't they? Of course they're the same. Well, I'll just put this out that um, they were um, the – the reason they fell and the reason they uh, angels don't have souls, they have grace. They have the, by the grace of God, by the grace of the one, they they exist. And um, they had said, oh, yeah, let, let's go this, this beef and this whole um, capturing of souls to do a bidding trip, you know. And they wanted power and and – they just seen these here. They just seen us as tree frogs, anyway. And uh, consequently, they were in prison in a fugue state. Their energy can go out, and their telepathy can go out. But what's needed to really contact the uh, the old ones, the basic fallen ones, they have a lot of um, demonic energy that has names, goetic demons that has names and do their bidding. But they can also um, communicate, and this is what satanic ritual is about. They can also communicate, and I'm talking about the high up rituals um, that that um, Zachariah Sitchin has attended, and and uh, everyone you know as attends, and they have high witches. There's three high witch, grand high witches in the world. Um, they're killed by their daughter in a druidic ceremony at 53, and and Arizona Wilder was one of these because again she was an enhanced individual, seriously seriously empowered. She was taken to Russia. She had the whole ice to death thing and brought back. Um, and she is able to communicate and summon um, these old ones inside a pentagram and keep them in there um, and keep their energy in there. And they can, through this, they can actually work with the, with the Draco. They can work with the Dracoid energies and communicate. And they're, in a, they're, they're basically, their end game is the one and the same. Um, so it doesn't matter. Many roads lead to their Rome, you know? Um, yeah, I, I guess I think they're the same. Um, maybe people can comment below their thoughts on what they think. I'm going to have to go now because I am so cold. It's got so cold and I've got no heating because um, it's not working. So I just want to wrap up and eat some casserole and get warmed up but thank you for having me and thank you everybody for listening and please join in with our discussions by commenting below that would be fantastic thank you enigma for hosting and thank you lady bird k for joining in and adding a lot to the show and my co-host russell who was late (laughs) (laughs) thank you lady anon's here too oh excellent and lady anon sorry um sorry um yeah thank 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 you very much for co-hosting and um yeah i've enjoyed the last two shows so it's been it's worked out really well um thank you well we've we've we can carry on with these sort of discussions um about this too um in the upcoming shows and and um but again every time you hit a show you've got something new to bring along chris (laughs) <laughs> so, and I had Discord problems. I, it's just not handling my mic. I jumped on the app here, and it seems to be working. So, and um, yeah, cheers, mate. It's it's been great chatting, and and we're going to do this again in a week's time, huh? Yes, brilliant. Saturday night. Saturday night is um, the night. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so I'll, I'll say goodbye to everybody, and I'll 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 be off now um, to eat <laughs> and, and use a hot water bowl. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Chris. God bless. Thank you. And thanks for all the YouTube viewers. Um, We'll see you next week. Yeah, hi to everyone on YouTube. Wonderful. Protection will lead to great prosperity and strength. It is good, eh, Lady A? I I think it's um, it's good to... Focus out a little bit further from what's going on with politics and everything, which is really important too. But also look at the broader picture of what's causing these things. Why is this energy existing?